So the technology goes actually by, the, by various names. Some are like emotional robots, affective computing, human-centered computing. But behind all of these is, in fact, a very simple thing, uh, relatively simple, and that is uh, automatic human behavior analysis and understanding, and more specifically, human facial behavior analysis. So human face, as such, is really fascinating. It is uh, serving our primary uh, goal of identifying other members of our species. It also serves as the main information for judging other people's age or gender or things like beauty or even personality. But more importantly, human face is a constant flow of expressions. The reason is that actually we are reacting and emoting on external stimuli all the time. So in fact, this flow of expressions is the only observable window that you could use to judge the inner states of human beings, such as emotions, intentions, attitudes, or moods. And it is exactly because of this reason uh, that the field got quite a lot of attention in the past 20 years. In fact, if you think, if we could recognize uh, who the person is and what is the interpretation of people's behavior, we will be able to use this information for a very wide uh, variety of applications. Some of these applications are illustrated here, and about some of those I will be speaking. So when it comes about the state of the art, we can recognize human faces relatively easily. This is something which we uh, called uh, solves problem, especially when we talk about frontal view faces. So we can recognize and verify somebody with a very high accuracy, and you have seen some of these systems, for example, on airports, which could recognize you just based on your face. And we can do that uh, in the presence of, for example, occlusions or in the presence of very large uh, changes in illum illumination. So this problem, at least as far as frontal view face is concerned, is considered solved. Similarly, when we talk about facial expressions, well, the, the same holds. So we can actually consider the problem solved as far as the frontal view faces are concerned. So you can actually see on these videos that uh, I included here that we can track the faces uh, relatively accurately in various uh, conditions. We can judge different facial expressions such as smiles or eyebrow frowns or eyebrow raises. We can even uh, estimate the intensity of those expressions and we can reason about higher level behaviors such as, for example, interest, even in uh, the cases when we have actually observations done uh, outdoors. However, when it comes to unconstrained recording conditions, so where very large changes in the head pose, in expression, in uh, the whole morphology of the face can occur, we can actually um, not deal with these kind of things, and this is still a challenge in the field. So these are typical videos which are uploaded uh, in social media such as Facebook and YouTube and this is in fact our uh, current goal. We want to be able to automatically analyze these kind of videos um, fully, right? So some of uh, the, the challenges you have is for example in extreme sports you will have a very large morphological changes in facial expressions. Uh, the down uh, left, uh, the down right video uh, is a typical um, uh, video which is uh, uploaded in YouTube and this is the reaction of people while watching Two Girls and a Cup, which is a very, very disgusting video. So as you can see, people are um, uh, occluding their face. Even at one point, one of the guys just walks away and so on. So these kind of videos are really the videos we want to be able to analyze automatically. Um, yeah, a lot of uh, motions. You see this guy here, which is like uh, jumping all the time. Yeah, this is the kind of videos we want. 
And um, in order to handle this kind of problems, we need to solve a number of things. So uh, one of these is to annotate uh, um, a lot of data in the wild. What does it mean? So collect all this kind of videos and images that you have on internet, in Facebook, in YouTube, and so on, and then manually annotate this, this kind of data. And then based on that, build better face models. Those are the models that will actually take into account large changes in the head pose, as well as large changes in expression at the same time, okay? And then personalize that to and do it in an online incremental manner so that you can actually ch make these changes as you observe a person, right? And finally, you have also to deal with the better inference models. And these inference models should be such that you can deal with context. Why with context? Context is something which is quite difficult problem. So this is who the person is. This is what the person is doing, where the person is, why the person is showing something, and what exactly this person is showing, and then how. So all these contextual questions need to be uh, understood why because for example uh, it really depends who you who you observe some people smile a lot and some don't so what is the maximum smile of somebody so very small smiles could be like absolute extreme for some people and very small smiles for other people or for example if I'm doing now my eyebrow raise it means that I believe I'm emphasizing something so I believe this is important whatever I'm talking currently about but if you have the same expression when somebody sees somebody else it could be just a surprise to see that person on that place so it's very important this context goes through these different layers and it's exceptionally important problem to be integrated into the inference models. So on all these problems, we made some progress, but they are still absolutely not considered so. Nonetheless, the technology as uh, available nowadays can still be used in a very wide uh, variety of applications. One of those is the market analysis where we use um, facial behavior um, reactions, behavioral reactions on different products and adverts in order to judge the successfulness of those products and adverts. So this technology is commercialized by a company called Realize and we are currently working with them on a project uh, which is called SIVA and it's sentiment analysis in the wild and what we want to do is extend this analysis also to verbal feedback. So what people really say about these products and adverts that they watch, and can we use that to make this judgment about successfulness, future successfulness about products and adverts? And aside of that, we want to build um, an application for enhancement of social skills, such as the negotiation skill. So we want to actually judge whether people are interested in each other, what is the sentiment that they show towards each other, whether they are agreeable towards each other or disagreeable, and how they handle, in case they disagree, how they handle this situation. Um, and this is probably what is the most inter is interesting for this meeting. One of our um, main focuses of attention at this point is the automatic analysis for facial behavior in medical purposes. Uh, so we currently developed uh, a method for automatic analysis of pain and intensity of pain from facial expressions. And you can use this um, in various ways. One of the ways is in physiotherapy. So these recordings, that, uh, that, that the recording that you watch here is actually uh, a data from physiotherapy uh, of people suffering from shoulder pain. So uh, the pain that we have here is the acute pain. So it's not a chronic pain. Chronic pain is uh, expressed differently. This is acute pain. So what is the patient asked is to lift the arm which is hurting and we record the expression and how this uh, acute pain actually is expressed. And based on that, we develop the models for automatic monitoring of the pain from facial expressions and the intensity of pain. Um, another very important project on which we are working is a project on autistic kids. And uh, uh, 
here what is important is that we want to build this uh, technology into a robot uh, which will have a camera observing the kids and this uh, technology running behind and we would try to help the kids understand their own expressions and uh, teach them the expressions as typically developing people show them. The reason why the robots are so important is that autistic kids uh, have a problem of gestalt which is they cannot analyze the face as a whole. They analyze the face as a set of parts. So in human therapists, when they try to show whatever expression, uh, the leakage of this spontaneous expression is obvious and normal because they're usually typically developing people. So they cannot express an expressor exactly in the same time, exactly in the same way, each time. So they usually have like the emphasis of a certain part of expression, which totally uh, makes autistic kids uh, confused because they see the expression as a set of parts, not as a whole. So uh, that's why the robots are really, really good in this case because they can always consistently show the expression in exactly the same way. Um, Another application, because somebody mentioned Watson here, is actually with IBM. We are currently uh, in negotiation um, in building uh, a very large prog project with IBM in which we will uh, have uh, IBM C, IBM Watson C, which would mean that actually when they give an answer uh, with the Watson system to a kid or a person, we would then try to judge whether this answer was accepted well. So for example, whether the answer made the uh, kid confused or whether additional information is needed. And we can do that based on the facial um, judgment. Uh, a smaller part of this uh, would be development of an online tool for meeting analysis where we will summarize uh, the meeting and agree agreeable <laughs> how much people agree with each other within the meeting or how much enthusiasm and engagement they show within the meeting. We want to summarize that based on the facial um, uh, feedback. What you see here is the uh, conflict analysis in political debates, which we will use for this kind of online meeting analysis system. And uh, these political debates are, are from Greek political uh, debate. So here actually there is a lot of extrovert people and we believe that actually in different uh, cultures the way people show the conflict and disagreement is very, very different and we should take this into account. So it's quite a large project to this with IBM. Um, so to conclude, um, once the technology is advanced a little bit more so that we can really use it in the wild, as I suggested, we would be able to use it for really, really a lot of applications. One of these is, for example, stress analysis in job interviews or uh, therapeutic uh, uh, interviews where you have uh, an interesting is, of course, couple relationship uh, uh, therapies or, for example, uh, addictive patients therapies uh, where stress is very telling about what they are intending to do. And uh, uh, it could also be used in in-vehicle environments where we, where we would like to decrease this stress in order to increase the safety of the driver and uh, the passengers or increase the stress for entertainment purposes in case the user finds this kind of exceptionally stressful uh, situations funny or fun. In any case, uh, that concludes my presentation. So thank you very much for your attention.